Hey there, it's Michelle, and I have the one and only Nikki Krawski joining me. Welcome to the show, Nikki. Thank you. It's good to be here. I am so excited for today. And before we get started, if you haven't gotten Nikki's book, Copywriting Strategies, A No-Nonsense Guide to Writing Persuasive Copy for Your Business, you definitely need to check it out. I'm going to put it in the link in the show notes. I took out all my post-its so it would look halfway decent <laughs> for the video, but OMG, so, so good. So big congrats to you. Oh my thank gosh. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. I'm so glad that you're, that you're reading it and you're using it and it's, it's helpful. That was the whole point of doing it. So I'm glad. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now you and I met, I think it was 2018. Uh, yeah. 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 I think it was 2018. We were at a live event and then we were heading back to the, we were stayed at the same hotel and we kind of like passing. And then we were riding back to the hotel at like 4 a.m. Something like crazy. And we were like, do you, are you going, let's just share an Uber or whatever it was. And then we're like, oh, and we realized we had things in common. And um, we're, we've also been in, and we're currently in a, in a mastermind group together. So that's mm -hmm. super cool. And even the other day at our retreat, I said to you, you know what? You're really smart. <laughs> and you were like, thank you. And I'm like, no offense or anything for before, because we were always friends and you, you have like the best personality. So funny. And I'm like, oh, this girl is like, really, I knew you were smart, but I was like, you are like way smart. So I'm super excited. I know, I know. Well, I know how awesome you are. Can you share with people, tell everybody a little bit more about yourself? Who do you help? What do you do? Who do you serve? All that good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You're so sweet. <laughs> um, so I have been a copywriter for 20 years now. Um, I'm finally owning that for a long time. It was like 15 plus years. Now we're going to say 20. We're just going to say 20 years. Um, and, uh, and have always loved it, loved the creating marketing messaging, have always, always loved it. Um, and then 10 years ago, I decided that it would probably be a good idea to also help other people learn to become professional copywriters. And so we created our, our brand is filthy rich writer, um, which, you know, some of the people who comment on our ads in the middle of the night are very nasty about. Um, but for us being filthy rich means having a job you love being good at what you do and making great money doing it. And that's absolutely what copywriters can can experience. And so we created our comprehensive copywriting Academy. And then of course, some have some other brands in addition to that. So I have my hands in all kinds of different pies. Um, and, and I love it. I love, I love digital business. Mm -hmm. it, 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 you're like, you are amazing. And I will say, and we had this conversation the other day and I was like, <clears throat> I feel like with your copy, you're always like on point. Cause like there's been in the past where I've you know, hired a copywriter to do something. I'm like, oh, I feel like they're missing the mark. Right. And mm -hmm. I feel like you really get it. Like you ask the right questions. You understand, especially like my particular audience. And when I'm sure you, you get to the point where you understand other types of businesses in order mm -hmm. for you to take on a job. So yeah. where I really feel it comes down to, which is what we're going to talk about today is really making those genuine connections with your audience yeah. right and yeah. and I always say and I could be wrong here but I always look at it as we're creating like we're beginning the conversation like how can we open that conversation to then make that connection even build the relationships which I probably said that out of order but you get what I'm saying right um, because yeah. that's really what we're striving for is to, to build those relationships so then they trust us and buy from us right mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think so many people think about copywriting or think about creating their messaging and they think, oh, but I don't want to be salesy. I don't want to be pushy. And it's, it's exactly what you just said. Copywriting and creating your messaging is not about being pushy doesn't work. Nobody wants to be sold to. Nobody wants mm -hmm. to be pushed or, or anything like that. It's about creating a genuine connection between the people who have a want or a need and the, the business that, and, you know, for your 
itself, if it's your own business, um, that has the best solution to that need and creating that connection by using words and by using messages that help that target audience understand that it's the best solution and understand that this is the good choice for them. You know, when they read a piece of messaging and go, oh, hmm, that's interesting. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, wow. That's my exact problem. Wow. They're really describing me. Wow. They really get what they're talking about. Wow. This is the best solution for me. Where can I put my credit card in? Mm -hmm. I love this. Okay. So why is it so important for business owners to learn copywriting? Mm -hmm. um, and I think probably people are like, uh, don't you train copywriters? I know. Are you telling? <laughs> uh, like, can we just I hire do. them out? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And you can, and you should, frankly, um, because copywriting is a, it, it is a specialized career. So once you get to the point in your business where you have some extra funds and you can hire a, a, um, a professional trained copywriter, that's key. There are a lot a lot of people out there saying, I'm a copywriter and on their website is just blog posts, which is different. That's different. content mm -hmm. writing. Um, you should mm -hmm. get to the point where you are hiring a trained mm -hmm. copywriter. However, until you get to that point, you can't, you're not going to get very far in your business if you don't learn how to refine your message, if you don't learn how to create that connection. And then too, when you are, when you hire a copywriter, that just makes you a better client because you can talk mm. with your copywriter in a more informed way. You know, your, your copywriter should be digging in and should be learning all kinds of things about your business. And really they should know your business inside and out just as well as you do. But when you understand what kinds of things they're looking for, because you learned you learned the key elements of messaging and you learned what makes messaging effective. That just makes you a better client as well. Mm -hmm. And and one of the biggest takeaways that I, I've had, <clears throat> and even um, when I first started in this digital space, we, we dove a lot into this, which I didn't even know, like, you know, what I was doing. I was just going with it. Um, but what it really also helps you with is when you understand copywriting, it's also in what you're saying right? So on your presentations, on your webinars, in your challenges, or even just a live video, right? And, and how you're saying things, you're still doing the messaging, but through your voice, like you're not writing it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? that's yeah. it's super important to know because, and I'm glad that you hit on where you're like, writing blogs is not copywriting. And I think that's where a lot of people think, oh, I'm, I'm a really good writer. Can you just dive into the like when someone says I'm a good writer versus what a copywriter. Yes, okay, exactly. <laughs> so first, well, we'll break down the definition of copy versus content writing. So, okay. so copywriting is message messaging that's designed to literally to persuade or to to sell, and that persuading could be persuading them to take an action. Often, especially in the digital space, it's taking an action like you know signing up for the newsletter, opting in here, or, or what clicking through an ad, um, but uh, designed to get them to, to do something or sometimes to, to think differently about something. Content writing, on the, and, and so by the way, like you were saying, copywriting is not just literal copy. I mean, it's just literal writing. It's, it's, it is, yes, the, the messaging in your emails and on your web pages and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, if you're doing a live video and the purpose of that video is to get people to do something, which let's face it, probably most of them should be, mm -hmm. um, that is, that's technically copywriting. Yes, maybe you didn't write it down, but the message that you're conveying is, is copy. Um, and then on the other side of that is content writing, which is messaging that's designed to, um, to entertain, to inspire, or to educate. So those are like your how-to blog posts or your listicles or your, you know, pictures of five different fabulous hotels in the Maldives, all that kind of stuff. And that's a totally, not totally different, but it's a very different type of writing. Mm -hmm. um, just fundamentally, there is a lot more strategy involved in copywriting and a lot more things that you have to learn and practice wielding in order to write great. And, and by great, I really just mean effective copy, copy that gets people to do what you want them to do, that gets them to click through the ad or gets them to click through your email or gets them to, to make a purchase. Mm -hmm. um, and I think because there's some confusion about the difference between the two, there are, um, and sometimes they don't know the difference. Some people who are 
just content writers and who will say, oh yeah, I'm a copywriter. I can definitely do that. Um, and it is, it's a very, it's a different set of skills. So you do want, when you get to the point that you're ready to hire a copywriter, you should look for a copywriter. And actually in the, in the book, I put in a section about how to hire a copywriter because it's not like with hiring anything, it's not easy. And there's mm-hmm. certain things that you should be looking for, you know, looking for pieces on their portfolio website. Cause they, First of all, they have to have a portfolio website, but all kinds of other things to look for and then test for to make sure that you have a copywriter who's going to be able to do the work that you want them to do. Because like you were saying, just, well, I'm a good writer. I should be able to write copy. It's, you know, like I'm, I'm a decent cook, but I don't have the skills to be a a Michelin chef. Um, I can, I can drive well, but I don't have the skills to be an indie race car driver. You Mm -hmm. know, it's just, it's, different it's a different skill set mm-hmm. so totally totally chewing and even going back to the first point of why we should know as entrepreneurs about copywriting is number one to know the difference and number two to even possibly take like some of that content and then maybe just put something at engaging because you want them to take mm-hmm. an action to comment or to click or whatever it is and kind of make that transition into getting them to take that action so I think mm-hmm. that's, um, and I'm glad that you, thank you for clarifying that because I think that's where a lot of people, I don't want to say go wrong, but that's when they start to question themselves. Like, wait a minute, how come my offer is not converting? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. So it must be X, Y, Z. And it's, they're not even thinking that it's the copy. Yeah. So since we're talking about that, what, what your thought is like, what are some other like mistakes that business owners make when it comes to copy? I think um, well, there are a couple of really common mistakes. And one of the big ones is just not having a purpose for what you're sitting down to write. You know, I, I am a business owner. I know how busy things get. I know that like, oh, I have to get an email out because I have to send an email to my list. And I think that what often happens is, first of all, I know that business owners, we often leave the messaging till the very end, right? Like, I don't want to deal with it. So I'm just going to deal with it later. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, whoa, I have to do this right now because I launched mm-hmm. tomorrow and I don't have copy on my sales page yet or whatever. Um, but I think there's an element of not understanding the purpose of what it is that you, anything that you write needs to have a purpose, right? Mm. It needs to have something that you were looking to have happen. It needs to have, um, otherwise there's no point in, if you're going to send an email just to send an email, there's no point to it. And then also too, you're going to increase unsubs because they're going to open the email. Maybe they're going to open the email and they're going to go, why did you bother sending this to me? So there has to, before you sit down, identify what the purpose is of this piece that you're putting together. And along with that, identify what you want people to do identify Mm -hmm. what action you want them to take or, or whatever. And then of course, within that piece, tell them to take that action because people don't take action if you don't tell them to. Um, And then I think the other big one is, is forgetting to put in the benefit to consumer, what they're Mm -hmm. going to get out of whatever it is you want them to do. Um, You know, I think as business owners, we can get so in our heads and we're like, all right, well, I want them to do this for this. And I want them to do this so that we can increase these conversions. But if you don't tell people why, what they're going to get out of doing something, they're, they're not going to do it, you know, well, buy this course. So you can pop, 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 pop. Okay. Yeah. But like, we were, nobody wants a course, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nobody's mm-hmm. nobody wants a course for the sake of having a course. People want whatever the end benefit of going through that course is going to be. So that's what you have to sell them on, not buying a course, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever it is that you're selling, but whatever, what that benefit is going to be, what that transformation is going to be once they go through the course. Yeah. 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 I love and those. Mm-hmm. And there are just so many opportunities to throw in benefits. Mm-hmm. So, so many, even when you're listing out, what are the elements in your, your offer or whatever? Uh, there's this module so that you can blah, 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 or, you know, the, the, so that is such a magic word to help get to, or mm-hmm. magic words to help get to the benefit, but all right, you get this. And so what do they get out of this portion of your training? Don't be afraid to, to really highlight the benefits as much as you possibly can. I love that. And that's definitely a big, a big mark. And then now I know everybody's going to go back through their emails or even emails that they receive and be like, okay, where did they ask me to take the action? And a lot of times I know we take for granted, like, well, duh, like, 
<laughs> you should obviously whatever, but literally people don't do like you, they have to be told what to do. Right. Mm-hmm. So sometimes like for me, I used to think like, well, that's so obvious. Like, wouldn't that make them feel stupid if I say this, but then I'm literally just the same thing. When you give them two options, then they're like, Oh my God, too many. I don't know which one to do. Right. So exactly. it's like, <laughs> well, we're, we're one person. So how can one person take two steps simultaneously? You need to give them one next step. And then after that, give them the next step after that and all that kind of thing. But yeah, when you were, we can, we're only one person, we can't simultaneously go down two paths at the same time. Yeah. 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 So funny. It's, it's, and, and it kind of goes back to, oh, I'm a good writer. It's like, thinking differently it's you're thinking like a marketer you're thinking like a copywriter not just a writer right so it's a whole different thing and and I truly believe that once you kind of get this like all of a sudden you start seeing everything different like things start Mm -hmm. popping out at you from even when you're driving down the road it's like oh that billboard says this or I went into the store or to the restaurant or whatever and now I see this okay now I see where all these things are coming into play Right. So I think that's really cool. Once, once like your spidey senses go up, it's like, now you start noticing it and then you become better doing these things Mm -hmm. because now you're seeing examples everywhere and in different situations. And that's, then you're like, Oh, I could totally model that in my business. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's one of the first things that we encourage our copywriting students to do um, besides just log in and start learning is to start (laughs) noticing that copy around you in the world because so much of us are kind of shut off to it. Um, But once you start to notice it and as business owners, it's the same thing to your point when Mm -hmm. you see good and bad examples, there's plenty of bad copy out there in the world. It's worth asking yourself, okay, what makes this good or what makes this bad and what would have made it good? Mm -hmm. Um, It's, it's a really, I don't want to say easy, but simple way to start training yourself to, to understand messaging and to learn to naturally be able to do it better yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Before I go on to my next question, if I like just wanted to learn how to do this on my own, I know you train copywriters, but mm-hmm. would it be like, would your course be good for someone who just has their business and just wants to learn more? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. There is a, there is a, a solid portion of it. That's, you know, how to put together your portfolio site, how to find and land clients. Um, so if they have their own business, so they're not interested in finding land clients, obviously just skip skip. that part. Um, but you know, we have, we go through the fundamentals, we go through the advanced elements. We have all kinds of practice, um, opportunities for you to hone your skills. And we have Mm -hmm. a really, really like fantastic. I'm so lucky, um, a really like fantastic, active, positive Facebook group where people post what they're working on and get and give feedback, hmm. uh, because that getting and give feedback is, is just as val- just as, as important as you're learning. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, we do have, some, uh, um, I wouldn't say a large percentage, but a, a decent percentage of people who purchase because they're thinking, huh, maybe copywriting, Maybe I want to do that professionally, but I know that I have my own business right now. So I want to use it for my own business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or even if you have someone on your team that, you know, is maybe on the fence and be like, okay, how can we, you know, sharpen your skills? Okay. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. So what are the keys to making, um, like any copywriting project successful? Great question. Um, first of all, you have to go into it with a plan, kind of like what I was saying about that strategy. I think some, so many of us sit down at, with like a blank word doc or a blank Google doc and go, uh, okay, what am I going to (laughs) write? The thing is, is you really, when you're writing your, your copywriting, you never should be sitting down to a blank doc because there are, there's certain things that you know that you have to hit on, right? You Mm -hmm. know, you have to hit on the benefit to consumer. You know, that you have to hit on um, the call to action. What are you going to ask them? You know, that there's certainly certain elements about your message that will support that benefit to consumer. You know, here's why it's great for you. Here's what's going to hear what, here's what you're going to get out of it. And then support points like, all right, here's how you're going to get that out of it. And here's, and if you're wondering, you know, all that kind of thing. So before you even sit down to start literally writing, create yourself an outline, go Mm -hmm. through those key elements. And so you can, you know, whether you do in the same doc or separate doc, so you have something to reference when you go, okay, where do I want to go from here? Oh yeah, that's right. I need to include this point. So this would be a great place to do this here. Um, 
But then also remember that at least 50% of copywriting, if not more, is editing. So I hope that that maybe takes off a little bit of the stress when you're sitting down to write it, because your first draft is literally your first draft. So the less you can be like, I have to get this right. I have to, I'm going to do it once and I have to get this right. The more that you can say, okay, I've got my outline. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to put this all together. And when I've got it all together, when I've got a draft, I'm going to get up. I'm going to go do something else. I'm going to go do laundry or I'm going to go for a walk or whatever. And then when my brain is fresh again, because the the brain does need that time, a little bit of time to process, you know, Mm -hmm. um, then when you sit back down to it, then you can edit it. Okay. What were my goals for this project? What are, what am I trying to do here? Huh? Okay. You know what? I like this phrase, but it kind of gets in the way of the message. So maybe I'm going to cut that and save that for something else. Um, it's you do, you have to allow yourself that time to edit and really to, to, to take that time away from the project mm-hmm. and a little tip. If you leave, all the messaging until the end, it's a lot harder to do that. You know, messaging is so, so crucial to any project we have. It really should be one of the first things that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Because I know Michelle, you and I have, have had so many friends where they, they start to dig into something. And as they dig into their messaging, they go, oh, wow, this is actually totally different than I thought that it was. And now, you know, major elements of the the project need to change. Mm -hmm. So the more time that you can spend on your messaging and getting all of those elements together at the beginning, the easier the whole process is going to be for you. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And it's kind of leading me into my next question, which is, um, and, and then maybe I'll give my feedback from that. When should, like, I know we kind of touched base on this, but when should we actually decide, okay, I'm going to hire it out or I'm going to write it myself. So when do I get to that point? Well, I mean, when you're first starting your business, you've got more time than you have money, right? (laughs) When you you haven't made any sales yet, that's probably the time to sit down, you know, read the book um, and, and learn it yourself. If you start to have some money, you know, if you've made some sales and now you really want to dial those sales up, that's where you could start thinking about a copier. I personally think a copywriter is one of the first investments you should make because changing your messaging, making your messaging better, you can directly link back to more sales. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you're, when you're thinking about hiring a copywriter, you don't have to hire a copywriter for every single thing. You know, look through your projects and think, okay, I have, I have this funnel, I have this page, I have this ad, I have this. What needs the most help? And what's going to, what's going to contribute if I make a change and if I improve it, what's going to make the, what's going to have the biggest impact. Mm -hmm. Because if you can say, all right, I'm going to have them rewrite my sales page. And if they re, you know, usually we say rewrite, but you usually, they have to start from scratch Mm -hmm. incorporating any messaging that you like, and a good copywriter will work with you on that and make sure it's all very clear. But if you, you know, if you have your sales page and originally it was, you were getting, you know, like one or 2% conversions on that sales page and you get a copywriter in and they can change it to three, four, 5% conversion. And I know we're talking like little percentages, but when you're sending a bunch of traffic, this could mean thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, a couple thousand dollars to a, a copywriter is can pay off in to, to, to the nth degree to massive amount. For sure. For mm-hmm. sure. And I know that's always a thing. It's everybody's like, oh my gosh, but this costs me so much, but I'm like, this is what's going to get you the sale. This is what is going to get you higher conversions. And, and I've seen it time and time again, and literally sometimes people just don't have the funds, which is totally fine. But as soon as you can, you have to look at this as it's pretty much, let's just say a one-time investment, right? If they're going to do it, then you're just talking about tweaks, you know, on Mm -hmm. how to possibly change it up. But if you have a professional Mm -hmm. do it from the start, like you said, what is, what is it costing you by not doing it? Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So those well, are the, okay. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, I mean, that's the, that's really getting into the business owner mindset. Yes. You know, and this is really something I have to teach my, my our copywriting students and our freelancing students is the, the, the average consumer mindset is, oh, I have to buy this. It's really expensive. I'll have to save up. Whereas the business owner mindset goes, okay, 
I, I'm, I'm interested in purchasing this. If I purchase this, what is it? What am I likely to get in return? How much mm -hmm. more am I likely to get in return? And that's truly the difference between, you know, purchase like, oh, I bought a new iPhone and an investment. Okay. I spent X amount of money on a copywriter and I'm expecting that to pay for itself many times over and yes. the more that you can evaluate things in those terms, you know, as I, frankly, as a business owner, I think there's very little that you should actually be spending your money on that won't pay for itself mm -hmm. many times over. If it's not, then that's where you should really dial back and go, Oh, I don't know about this. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. For sure. Now, one of the things I've done, and and maybe you can either tell me if what I'm doing is correct or or contribute to it, is when I go to hire um, a copywriter, like even for myself, whenever I'm doing a new project or a new course or something like that, like I literally ask myself a few questions like, you know, what problems do they have? Um, you know, like, how are they feeling right now? How do I want them to feel when it's mm -hmm. over? Like just different things like that. I think it's like six or seven questions that I ask myself. And then I literally fill them in either from what mm -hmm. I hear people say, or I actually do market research, which we should always do. Right. And then I just start putting putting it together and really by having it in the different sections for me, it helps me with whatever content I'm creating and um, hearing those objections, like what objections do they have, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I usually make this whole long thing and that's what I give to the copywriter to, mm -hmm. to give them kind of the jumping off point. They usually ask me some questions as well. Mm -hmm. So am I on the right track with that? Or what do you, when you decide to work with them, like how do you deal with that? Yeah, that's great. I mean, the, the, like you were saying, the more information that you have is going to only help you um, in in everything that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, what I will say, though, is that a good copywriter should be asking you all of those questions mm -hmm. and then some. I, you should expect that once you decide to work with a copywriter and you decide on the price of the project and you guys are both comfortable with it, you should expect a an, in, an input call or kickoff call, whatever you want to call it. And it should be an hour or so. Your copywriter should be recording it as well as taking notes. And they should be digging into your business, digging into the purpose of the project, digging into who your target audience is. All, all of those things you were saying, you know, what motivates them? What are they afraid of? Um, where all of the demographic information, um, what are their objections to purchasing? What is the, what is the perfect end result for them? And all of that kind of stuff, but a copywriter, and you can give that to your copywriter. Mm -hmm. um, certainly that's only going to help them out, but these definitely should be questions that your copywriter is asking you because they need to know all of that stuff to mm -hmm. put together a great a great piece of copy. You know, I, people who've never worked with a copywriter before should expect that there will be a round or two of revisions just because there are things as a business owner, there are things in your head that you take for granted, you don't think to mention to a copywriter. And there are things that they, because they didn't know, they wouldn't have thought to ask. Mm -hmm. So, and that stuff will come out in a, a couple of rounds of revision. I usually like two, two is a reasonable amount. Um, I mean, you should be working with a copywriter until you are absolutely thrilled with the results that should be um that's what we teach our students um but part of what makes it just two rounds of revisions is you know the average maximum is because your copywriter should be taking so much time at the beginning to understand you understand your business understand the project understand where the project fits into your business as, as a whole um, researching going through any stuff that you've done before you know your copywriter should be saying okay what pieces have you done before that are similar to this that you really liked what pieces didn't you like and why didn't you like them or what didn't perform and why do you think they didn't perform? There should be the beginning of a project. Um, and if business owners are like, oh my gosh, I wouldn't even know where to start. Don't worry about it because it's on the copywriter right. to lead you through this call, to ask you questions. And quite frankly, too, for the business owner, it can be a very 
um, a very useful call because mm-hmm. not everyone is as, as, um, prepared as you are. Michelle. <laughs> Thank you for saying um, that in a nice yes. way. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Um, but not every business owner, so many business owners have never taken the time to ask themselves mm-hmm. some of these deeper questions and really figure it out. You know, I, I've been on so many input calls and I know my students have as well. We're asking the questions of the business owner and the business owner goes, Oh, Oh mm-hmm. yeah, I guess. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I've been on calls where the business owner have decided that the project that they thought we were going to start with is not actually the one that they need to do first. It needs to be something else. And mm. so your, your copywriter should really work with you to be your partner mm-hmm. in, in marketing and in everything. I mean, and you don't have to hire them. You don't have to, it's, but for the duration of that project, they should really be a reliable partner for you. I love that. I love that. And yes, I am a little bit type A, but honestly, I do, I do that for also my, my, myself, because I, um, I've never switched projects, but it's important for me to make sure that what I'm doing is what they want. Right. Um, because then that's the other place I find people miss the mark. It's like, you think you're giving them what they want, but really they want something else. Right. Or even just the way they describe it. And then you miss the mark altogether. So I, I put this stuff down just to be like, yes, I can deliver on that. I can deliver on that. You know, this is the way I want them to feel, or this, these are the transformation, the results that I want them to get. Um, but yeah, that I, everything that you, that you just said, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like spot on. And you did answer because while you were talking, I had a question like, do, does the copywriter do research? Because it's also in how I talk right? In my, in my voice. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's also something else that I find that sometimes like really, or, or I read something and I'm like, Oh my gosh, this person talks just like me or something like that. And then I get on the phone with them. I'm like, no, it's not even close to the same person. And literally as reading versus seeing them in person, it's like two different people. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, that's, that's the, (laughs) it is, but that's (laughs) the magic of copywriting. Yeah. That's the thing. Your copywriter, their natural voice doesn't matter right? Mm -hmm. As long as they are able to learn your voice and write in, write in a voice that is so seamless that, that even you can't tell, like, I'll I'll do this with my team. Sometimes we were just looking at something the other day went, wait, did I write this? Did Kate write? Who wrote this? (laughs) Cause we write so much stuff and it wasn't me. It was Kate. And she did such a great job that I couldn't even remember if I had written it myself or not. Hmm. Um, and that's what you're looking for in a copywriter. And I would say to don't be, um, to, to your audience, don't look at a copywriter's website and evaluate their tone based on what they have. Go over to their portfolio site right. and see if they've been able to adopt different brand voices for different clients, because that shows that they they know what to do to figure out how a brand needs to talk and then can write in that way. Mm-hmm. So don't worry if you go to a, if you're like, Oh, I'm interested in working with this copyright and you read their, you know, you read their, their homepage and you're like, Oh, but I don't like their tone. That's fine. That's their tone. Right. You want them to write in your tone and with your voice. Right. Yeah. I love it. Is there any last minute, anything that you wanted to finish anything? Um, I would just say, you know, embrace copy, embrace your messaging. The sooner you can, the better. I know I've mentioned that a couple of different times, but I know, I, I think almost every single business owner I know waits until the very last part of a project, Mm -hmm. um, to, put together the messaging. And that's not when you want to be doing, you don't want to be doing it when you're under the gun and when you're going, Oh my gosh, what do I have to say in here? You want to be able to allow yourself the time to put that together. So when you start working on a project, move your messaging up to the beginning of that timeline, because sometimes too, when you're working on your messaging, like we're saying, it can affect what you do for the rest of the project. Mm-hmm. And then it's, it's so much less scary. And it's so much when you, when you have that time to work on it and to think it through, you have other business owner friends to workshop it a little bit or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but co- messaging is, it's yeah. so, so it may be the most important thing to a business. Honestly, even if you had a, a cruddy, um, a cruddy, offer or a service and mm-hmm. not that I'm saying anybody does, of course, you want to put the best thing out into the world, but let's say a business owner had a really cruddy service or whatever. If you had great messaging, you could get people to buy it. Obviously yep. don't, 
don't do that. Have a really great <laughs> offer, have a really great service. But you know, it's it's you can have the, the best pictures, the best everything in the world. But if when people if the messaging is off, nobody's gonna buy. But you could have just like a white page with black text on it. And if if the messaging is good, it really connects with your target audience and you have the right target audience, mm-hmm. then then they will purchase. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And it's so, cause there are a lot of elements. So like in my mind, this whole conversation, I'm just thinking the sales page, right? But no, 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 you got the emails and whatever else that you got going on. And even like your registration page, it's like literally the whole journey for the mm-hmm. customer. Yeah. And to your point, that's something that I do just in general. Um, what did you call me? Because I am prepared. <laughs> I'm going to use that awesome. from now on, Nikki. This Thank is you. good. Yeah, this is a good thing. Do not at all think that I'm saying this is a bad thing. It's awesome. <laughs> it would be great if every business owner did it. And just like as a business owner, when you're scheduling out your stuff, right? It's like sometimes you're like, I need to work on the webinar content. But do you really? Because I always try to do whatever I need to delegate first. And mm-hmm. then that way, while they're working on that stuff, then I work on my stuff. Then when they're done, I'm done with my stuff. And now I can proofread or move forward with that. It's like, if you give your team, oh, now shorter period of time, this is just for everything, not just including copyright. If you Mm -hmm. give them, oh yeah, now you're going to work on this and I need this in two days. Like, it's like, you need to give them time to be creative and do their thing as well. So I love that you hit on that because that's so important just across the board as a business owner, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's get into Michelle's hot minute. I set my alarm for one minute. I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions. So just answer the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Ready? Oh man. Yeah. Let's see what comes out. Okay. (laughs) I tried to keep it PG. Okay. Ready? All right. What is your guilty pleasure? (laughs) My guilty pleasure. Oh, wine. Yeah, obviously. Definitely all the time. Okay. Well, red or white? Generally red, generally red, red, but I'm open to both. Okay. Would you rather be the funniest person in the room or the smartest person in the room? That is hard for you. That is on purpose. Very hard (laughs) because I like to try to be both. (laughs) Dang. Um, Probably smartest, but my ego would definitely take uh, take a hit. (laughs) When someone finds out what you do or where you're from, what is the first question they ask you? Uh, Oh, what is that? usually or like oh copywriting do you put the little circle around the <laughs> around the c or the r i'm like nope that's very different very different favorite way to distress uh can i say wine again is that terrible i think i might <laughs> no. have a problem i think i really need to- oh my god what do you wish Maybe someone <laughs> stuff's coming up <laughs> what do you wish someone taught you a long time ago what do i wish someone taught me a long time ago um how to how to use my energy in the best times of day for it. I spent a lot of time trying to be the person who was all just as on from two to five in the afternoon as I was from like nine to mm. nine to noon or whatever in the morning. I spent a lot of years and wasted a lot of money trying to like, oh, this supplement or do this or this technique or whatever. And just that's not the time that I naturally work. Nobody is as evenly and perfectly effective throughout the day. You know, I don't care these business owners or these entrepreneurs were like, I get up at 6am and I work until 10 o'clock at night. And it's all fantastic all the way through. I'm calling BS on that yes, because uh, it's not how human beings work. And I do wish someone had clued me into that maybe 10, 15, like a long time ago. That's a really good one. All right. So I know we passed our minute, but what is, what tells you most about a person? What tells me most about a person? Um, you know, that's a great question. I guess maybe the, the, their actions, you know, cause it's, it's very easy to say, oh yeah, I do this, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to, but if they don't follow through on it, you really learn a lot about, about who they are. It would have to be actions. Cause I'm ge- in general, a very bad judge of character. I'm like, <laughs> oh, you like me, then you must be a wonderful person. <laughs> Not actually, as it turns out, that's not how it works. Um, I don't know a lot of terrible people by any means, Um, but yeah, I think actions is probably, probably the best thing I would, I would go with. I love it. This was so much fun. Wasn't too painful. (laughs) It was terrible. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, I am great. I know. And I so appreciate you for coming on the show today. Can oh, you, my pleasure. Oh, I just, I just love you. Okay. So tell people where they can find you. Oh, yes. So, um, so if you are looking to learn more about copywriting, definitely check out the, the copywriting strategies book. Um, I kind of, obviously you can't put an entire copywriting career in there, but it was good. I tried to make it a really good place for people to start. Mm -hmm. um, if you're interested and you think maybe copywriting might be something that you want to learn more about in depth, or you maybe want to become a copywriter, good for you. Um, you can go to freecopywritingtraining.com and uh, sign up for our, our free, free, free training video. Yeah. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, there you have it. How to make genuine connections with your audience through effective copy. Definitely go check out Nikki. I'll drop where you can find her and all the good stuff in the show notes. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you again, Nikki, for coming on. My right. pleasure. Thank you. All right. Well, let's continue to grow your business together. Until next time. I pressed the wrong button.